Good morning family. Well, from a very cold plot, I hope you all are still warm, either in a warm bed or on a warm couch this morning, watching this. And let's just go into the Word of God and that will surely, surely warm us, our hearts and our minds this morning. Before we start, let's pray. Our Father that art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We thank you for a morning so precious. We thank you that we can be in your presence. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you are touching hearts and minds and bringing this message. I pray that people, as they watch and listen, will feel the warmth of your presence. I pray that this message will flow from my lips faultlessly and that people will not see me, the imperfect vessel, but you, the perfect God, that's bringing it through me. We thank you for your word. We thank you that you are a God of miracles. We thank you that you are the turnaround God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Family, our message this morning is turn around. And I'm reading scripture this morning from Ezekiel 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knoweth. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O you dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied there was a noise, and behold a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon this slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. And then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried, and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your grave and bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves, and shall put my spirit in you, and you shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall you know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it says the Lord. Glory to God and praises for His word, family. Now family, turn around. A turnaround is a development or change that results in a favorable and beneficial outcome. Divine turnaround is when God steps into a specific situation to reverse the circumstances abruptly, turning it into a positive experience that is beyond human and scientific explanation. And today's message, family, is a focus on God's ability 
to reverse negative things in life. God does supernatural turnarounds. They are endless and they are real. The scriptures are filled with supernatural turnaround stories in a person's life. A group of people, cities, nations, generations, all can have a supernatural turnaround. You could be in the place right now to be the next in line for a supernatural turnaround in your life. Your health, your finances, your relationship, business, or a hundred other things. And there are so many scriptures that today, family, I cannot quote them all as I always do. I urge you to take notes and go and read them again. Family, I want to tell you the story of Stephen Lungu and his turnaround. My Uncle Pete sent me a video clip and the day thereafter I read the testimony. He was born to a mother of only 14 years old. He was a burden to her and she left him on the street at the age of four with his younger brother and sister. He didn't know how to care for his siblings at all. So at an early age, he turned to the streets. God became the pinnacle of Lungu's hatred. Instead of submitting himself to God's authority, he took control with his own hands, his own weapons. Lungu joined a gang called the Black Shadows, known for its relentless beatings and killings. Lungu also hated white men. And one day on a mission along with the Freedom Fighters, he set out to fulfill a terrorist attack on a local bank, where many white people often went. On the way to the bank, they came across a tent church. And Lungu said, in his disgust for the church, he led his group to blow up the church instead. And because there were still two or three minutes left, he told his gang to go inside and just check out things. The entire gang went in and sat in the back row of that service. And Nungu said, there was a gorgeous girl and she gave a testimony and it put him completely off balance. And then the preacher went on and the preacher read Romans 6, 23 and 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9. And as the preacher spoke about the life of Jesus, Lungu realized he identified with Jesus. I broke in tears, Lungu said. I put down my AK-47 and bombs and started walking forward. He was crying for mercy. And after the service, another gang came and ended up killing many of the church members that night. But Stephen Lungu went to his home under the bridge and cried to God. He then went to the authorities to tell him of all the horrible crimes he had committed throughout his life. He went to confess. He said he was interrogated for eight hours. After eight hours, do you know what they told him, family? They said, if your Jesus has forgiven you, we forgive you too. What are the chances, family? The, a policeman gave him a Bible and although he could not read it, it became his most treasured possession. Stephen Lungu says that God, with his sense of humor, then had a white man take him into his house. And at that time it was forbidden. And he started to learn about Jesus. Lungu said he got his uh, degree after being born again, his BA degree, born again. Lungu has since traveled all over Africa, sharing his story and preaching the gospel to thousands. In 1980, he became a translator for Michael Cassidy, the founder of African Enterprises. And eventually, Lungu now is the CEO and president because he took over Cassidy's position. He lived in Malawi with his wife, Rachel. Family, what an example of turnaround. A turnaround is a development or change that results, as I said, in a favorable or beneficial outcome. 
divine turnaround family is when God steps into a specific situation to reverse the circumstance abruptly, turn it, turning it into a positive experience that is beyond human and scientific explanation. Like my daughter's healing in 2014. But let us look at only three examples of many of divine turnaround in precarious situations in the Word. Exodus 14 verse 1 to 31. The children at the Red Sea were about to perish or be captured. But God gave them a turnaround. The sea was used as a path to their destiny. It was sudden. It was like a dream. 1 Samuel 1 verse 6 to 7 and 2 verse 1. Hannah was a woman of sorrow. Her rivals made her miserable. But when God stepped into her situation, a barren woman became the mother of six children. Divine turnaround brings overwhelming joy that is beyond description, family. Luke 5 verse 1 to 10. Peter and his friends were professional fishermen. They knew when to fish. Morning time was not the best time to fish. The fishers could see them and run. The glare will not allow them to see the fish. So they knew better than Jesus in the natural when it came to fishing. But Jesus was instructing them here to fish in the morning after they had toiled all night, which is the best time to fish. But they obeyed reluctantly and halfway as Jesus told Peter to cast his nets, but he only cast a net. But they were astonished. They caught net breaking, boat sinking fishes that day. Divine turnaround defies science. It defies all laws. Family, may you experience net breaking turnarounds in Jesus name. Have total trust in God. Mark 9, 23, Jesus said to him, If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Mark 10, 27, Jesus looked at them intently and said, Humanly speaking, it is impossible, but not with God. Everything is possible with God. Hallelujah, family. Have faith that God can turn your situation around. You must have a violent faith to provoke a turnaround in life situation. Violent faith is aggressive, it's persistent. It's a bit like a bulldog. It seizes with a grip and it does not let go. The man and woman who trusts in God is not passively waiting. He moves. The man who trusts God does not listen to no or negative news from the doctor's family or employers or government or the economic situations. Every situation is an opportunity to trust God. A blind, non-stop, constant, continual, steady, relentless pressure on your covenant and on the devil. Like blind Bartimaeus in Mark 10 verse 46 to 52. And the parable about the persistent widow in Luke 18 verse 1 to 8. They did not let go. Family, you must be desperate for a turnaround. And praise God. Praise God. David enjoyed several turnarounds in his life. He was a man of praise. Praise is an altar for divine turnaround. Praise bring God into devastating situations. Psalm 22 verse 3. But you are holy, O you that inhabit the praises of Israel. And Jeremiah 20 verse 13, Sing to the Lord, give praise to the Lord. He rescues the life of the needy from the hands of the wicked. And Psalm 30 verse 12, How could I be silent when it's time to praise you? Praise God. Now in 2 Kings 6, Samaria had reached its breaking point. The ancient capital of Israel was crumbling under the long, oppressive siege by the Syrian army. Despair and desperation took hold of the people in the face of severe food shortages and runaway inflation. It's a bit like the time we are in now, family. In reaction, the king of Israel sent a search party for 
the prophet Elijah with the intent to kill him. The Bible doesn't say why the king wanted to kill him. But when the king of Israel approached Elijah, the prophet already heard the word of the Lord. He said, this time tomorrow, the famine would be broken. 2 Kings 7 verse 1. Then Elijah said, hear you the word of Lord, the Lord. Thus says the Lord, tomorrow about this time shall I measure of fine flour. It will be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. It was a turnaround word, family, and everything the prophet said came to pass. In just one day, Samaria had miraculously turned around and the Syrians did not get a foothold in Israel. The word turnaround has come up in my heart again and again recently. What is God up to? In a second of tremendous challenges and change, I believe God is setting the stage for personal turnarounds as well as a turnaround in our nation. Ezekiel 37 verse 3 to 4, He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. And then He said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Isaiah 66 verse 8, who hath heard such a thing? Who hath seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Family, the prophet Isaiah proposed the question. He asked, can a nation be born in a day? And some have reworded this to say, can a nation be saved in a day? The prophet was referring to the nation of Israel, but in the light of the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we can envision much broader possibilities. Jesus needs to get what he paid for. He died, not just for individuals like Stephen Lungo, but he died for nations. And so when it comes to our nation, we are being challenged to lift our faith for divine turnaround, family. Jesus didn't redeem us to reduce us. He redeemed us to increase us. We ought to prepare ourselves for a turnaround because when God steps into a situation, everything has to move. The widow told the prophet Elijah her problem. The creditor is coming. The creditor was coming to take her two sons to be his, his slaves. And we can only imagine a desperation family. 2 Kings 4 verse 1, Elijah again received a turnaround word and then asked her what she had in her house. And all she had was a little bit of oil. And Elijah instructed her to borrow as many jars as she could, pour the tiny bit of oil into the jar and then predicted how the oil would not cease as long as she had containers to pour them into. Everything the prophet said came to pass. She sold the abundance of oil. She paid off her creditors and saved her two sons. God, family, is merciful. And in his mercy, this would have received a turn around. Knowing that God is merciful, we don't have to settle for a reduced life, a ill life, a, a poor life. For example, King Ezekiel received a prophetic word from the prophet Isaiah to set his house in order because he was going to die. The king didn't settle for that, but he cried out to God for a turnaround. That same prophet returned with a new word that the king would live 15 more years and his enemies would be defeated. Then King David wrote this in the word, the righteous cry out and the Lord hears and delivers them out of their trouble. It's in Psalm 34 verse 17. And some of you family have been in your situation for so long, it becomes your identity. The word of God is our identity family. It's time to get a new word about that situation. Do you need a turnaround? Cry out to God. He's merciful and in His mercy, He turns things around. 
Habakkuk gives us powerful instruction about the timing of things. He received a vision from the Lord, knowing that that vision was not for now, but for an appointed time. Habakkuk 2 verse 3. He further states, if it delays, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not delay. Habakkuk 2 verse 3b. In other words, sometimes it takes time to come to pass. But when it's time for the vision to happen, it won't delay. Turnarounds are also often attached to destiny and timing. God did a turnaround in Saul so he could obey him. God did a turnaround in Israel so that the nation could obey him. We are often seeking breakthroughs and turnarounds. But a turnaround happens when it's time to obey our destiny. Remember family, this promise from the Word. The Holy Spirit said, little by little I will drive them out before you until you become fruitful and inherit the land. Psalm 30 verse 8 to 12 Still I cried out to you, Lord God. I shouted out for mercy, saying, what would you gain in my death if I were to go down to the depths of darkness? Will a grave sing your song? How could death thus declare your faithfulness? So hear me now, Lord. Show me your famous mercy. O oh God, be my saviour and rescue me. And then he broke through and transformed all my wailing into a whirling dance of ecstatic praise. He has torn the veil and lifted from me the sad heaviness of mourning. He wrapped me in the glory garments of gladness. How could I be silent when it's time to praise you? Now my heart sings out loud, bursting with joy, a bliss inside that keeps me singing. I can never thank you enough. Oh God, I can never thank you enough. Family, when things are shaking and changing, know that God is in that and setting the stage for our turn around. And some will be instant, but others will be a process. When things are turning slowly, we don't sit and we don't quit. We stay active in our assignments because the vision will come on time. There will be a divine turnaround, family. And it is vitally important that we keep the faith, believing supernatural turnarounds are possible. Pray that the Lord will turn your life around in a profound and miraculous way. Radically change your thoughts. Enlarge your heart to believe and transform your expectations for your future. Family, believe that today is your turnaround. Today, family, is your turn around. Praise God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that with you nothing is impossible. And for us in the natural, it's sometimes so easy to just see naturally. But you are the God of the supernatural. And I thank you for your word. I thank you, Father God, that we are in a turnaround season for each of these of your children. I thank you, Father God, that you are touching them and that you are moving and shaking, not in, only in our individual lives, but in our nation, Father God. And I pray for this nation. I pray for the revival of this nation and that the supernatural turnaround will come, that the fire will ignite in so many hearts, that it would be unstoppable, that it would be unstoppable, Father. I thank you. I thank you that you are the way maker. You are the miracle worker. You are the God with whom nothing is impossible. I thank you for the turnaround in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.